Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm reviewing LEGO Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, set number 76231, the Guardians of the Galaxy Advent Calendar. This has 268 pieces, 6 minifigures, and retails for $45 in the US. This is only the third set ever based on a LEGO Marvel Disney Plus show or special, so that's pretty exciting. And honestly, I think that this is a great advent calendar and much better than the Avengers one from last year. Even though that one wasn't terrible, it was pretty decent. It's just nice to get something that actually fits with a Christmas theme, because the holiday special was a delightful surprise. The first minifigure we're looking at is Peter Quill. Unfortunately, I did get a misprinted version with that one eye messed up. And I've got him standing on a stud because he does have this weird, like, rocket booster contraption. It's great to see Lego try to brick build those, like the boosters on the sides of his pants, or on the sides of his boots, I guess. And, I mean, I think it's fairly successful. It might blend in a little bit better if those brackets were red instead of dark bluish gray, but, I mean, I appreciate that Lego's trying to actually represent them, because they did print them on Star-Lord T'Challa, but we've never gotten them printed on regular Star-Lord. The torso print looks great, but I believe it is just reused from the Benatar set from 2021, and the blasters are, again, in that newer pearl silver color. This is the same head that I think they've been using in the Jurassic World sets as well for Chris Pratt, so it's not really anything new. Also, I'm actually not sure Peter's head was misprinted. Maybe it was just a trick of the light. Um, but here's Rocket Raccoon. This is also the version from the Benatar with, like, that newer head mold without the shoulder pads. I think that that looks fine. I do like the torso print like design. I really like the scarf. Um, but I really feel like Lego could have made this figure better, like even when it originally came out. First of all, the brown strip from the tail, that looks awful. Lego can print that piece so that it's kind of a seamless appearance from the front and they should have printed it. Also, like while the change to brown from dark bluish gray is nice because it is more accurate, the color of the suit isn't. The color of the suit is a dark blue in the movie, so I don't know why LEGO went with grey when their dark blue would look perfectly fine for it. And then lastly, the scarf, like LEGO could have put an actual scarf mold. I don't think they would have had to make a new one, but they were making a new head mold for Rocket, so they could have just made the neck a tiny bit smaller to fit into the existing scarf mold. So it's still a good figure, I just think that it could be a lot better. Next up we have Team Groot. This is another figure returning from the Benatar. Fantastic, great torso and leg printing. Once again, they've also made the switch for Groot from uh, from reddish brown to this kind of dark tan color, which I think is very successful. Um, I mean, I think I think it definitely works. And he is holding a cell phone because he is a teenager now, so that's kind of cute. It's not accurate to the special though, because he's not. He doesn't look like this in the special. He now kind of looks like a like jacked up gym bro. I think because they're trying to pretend like he's in that kind of twenties college phase. I hate Groot's appearance in the Holiday Special and in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I think it looks the worst out of anything so far, and I was not a huge fan of Teen Groot in the first place. I just miss Adult Groot. I just wish we could get Adult Groot back. And then finishing out the normal Guardians figures, we have Mantis, who looks excellent. Mantis is a great character. I think she really leveled up in the Holiday Special, and it was just nice to have something that actually focused on her and Drax instead of like, you know, some of the other Guardians who have gotten more screen time. So she's holding this little guitar, which I'm guessing is just a Christmas present. So you can just kind of like move that down to see her uh, torso print. Unfortunately, Lego still doesn't have a good face print for her. She doesn't have pupils. Like, like this face print looks okay, but Mantis does not have white pupils in the movies except in Thor Love and Thunder because I think they forgot to black out her eyes. But in all of the Guardians movies, she has pure black eyes. And I think that Lego should have a unique face print for her because of that. Drax is up next. This is one of the two exclusive minifigures, and I absolutely love his ugly Christmas sweater with dancing baby Groot. I think that that is just perfect. What I don't think is perfect is the new skin color for him. I have no idea why Lego went over to sand green. Drax is not sand green. Drax is gray. He's green in the comics, but he's not green in the MCU, and it's not like a different interpretation of the camera light or anything. James Gunn has clearly said on Twitter that Drax is like a bluish gray because painting him green was just like too much effort or money or something like that. So I really don't agree with Lego changing Drax's skin color to gray. And at this point, every single Guardian has gone through a skin color change except for Peter Quill and Gamora, although Gamora isn't in this advent calendar. And Mantis, I guess. But that's kind of weird to me. Like, 
it's not that hard to get the colors right. You know, like they finally fixed Rocket and Groot. They fixed Nebula and the Guardians 2 sets, but they made Drax worse. And I don't really get why. Like even Sand Blue would have worked better for Drax because he is kind of a bluish gray color, but he's definitely not greenish gray. So I really don't like this change at all. And then finally, we've got Nebula. I also love her ugly Christmas sweater with Thanos on it. Unfortunately, the torso is female specific, as you can see uh, just by like the printing on it and like the cutout. That's a little bit disappointing. I would have preferred like a gender neutral torso so you could put any guardian like in this Thanos Christmas sweater. I love her face print though. It does have the kind of like orangey, goldish, like metallic stripe from Avengers Endgame. I don't remember if she even had that stripe still in the Guardians Holiday Special. I feel like she didn't, but I really like that Lego made that piece so that we can have an Endgame accurate nebula. Uh, and she is holding a little Christmas present that matches the colors of her sweater. This figure is also inaccurate though. Ooh, that's really nice back torso or back head printing as well. And nice back torso printing with, is that Gamora and Thanos together? That's kind of messed up because he killed her, but I mean, it's cute. Um, but yeah, like Nebula didn't wear an ugly Christmas sweater. It was Mantis and Drax wearing them. So even though I really like this print, I feel like Lego should have put Mantis in the sweater instead of Nebula. Okay, so here are all of the kind of advent calendar builds. We're not going to go through them in any particular order. I think I'll try to group them like semi like together, you know, with holiday stuff and like micro builds together. Um, but yeah, I already I just opened all the days at once. I didn't really get to do the day by day advent experience this year because I was like back and forth between Michigan and Canada. And then I'm going to like India, like the day after I'm filming this, like once this goes up, I'll already be there. So I just opened it all at once. So that's why like you're not getting kind of like a day by day opening, which I also think would just prolong the video. And the purpose of the video is just to show you guys, you know, like the awesome stuff that you get in this set. It's not really to show you the day by day opening, which I had tried in like 2019, I think I did, or 2020, I did that for Lego Harry Potter. And uh, I don't think people really liked the day by day openings. So anyway, so let's go ahead and jump into it because this has a lot of cool little builds. Okay, so we'll start with the little ship side builds. So this is the mining pod from the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Uh, like the It's one of the collectors that they use to get down into Ego. It's instantly recognizable. I think it works really well and I like it. It's a cute little build. We've also got the mining pod from nowhere from the first movie. This is the one that Rocket was in when he went outside and like Gamora and Quill were having, you know, like their moment in space. Um, and I think that this is like, th this is also a really good build because again, it's instantly recognizable. What's less recognizable to me is this. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. Is it one of like the Sovereign's pods from Guardians 2? I'm not really 100% sure. Or is it, is it this, no, this might be the escape pod from the back of the Benatar from Infinity War because of the sand blue. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe. So I, I think that's what it's supposed to be. Then I think that this is Rocket's Warbird from Guardians 1. I'm not 100% sure on that also. Like it could be Taserface's ship from Guardians 2, but I think it's supposed to be Rocket's, like the one that was the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. And I did really like this build. You've got the cannons at the front. You've got some really cool looking engines at the back. And I think that it's just a nice design. And then, of course, we do have the two main Guardian ships, although not the one for Guardians 3. This is the Milano. I still miss the Milano. I think it's like my favorite spaceship design ever. It's one of my favorite Lego sets ever, like the original big one from 2014. And I'm still waiting for a UCS version. Again, instantly recognizable. I really love all of the metallic or like flat silver teeth pieces to create that kind of feathered appearance. And I also like that they use a transparent tooth piece for the cockpit. I think that this is, you know, like a really successful little build and you can actually like move it and you can adjust all of those feathered pieces as well. And then we've got the Benatar, which I don't think looks as good just because it's, it's much blockier and squarer and it's just not as like kind of refined as the Milano and some of the other ones. Um, it's also a lot more studded, which is fine, but like it is kind of just nice to see something that's properly like smoothed over. So yeah, it just feels like a little bit more incomplete to me, but you can still tell what it is, especially because of that orange color, and you can like kind of move the engine pods in and out. Although if this is the escape pod, unfortunately there's, I think it is the escape pod, there's no way to like attach it here or anything, and that could have been something that would have made this mini build like a little bit cooler. And then as for regular kind of accessories, you do have uh, the guitar that Mantis was holding. 
You do get the Power Stone, which is great because it played a huge role in the first Guardians movie. I did not pop any of them out of this like sprue though, because I'm going to keep this brand new. I have a lot of Power Stones out already. Um, but they came with Drax, who was holding a fork and a spoon, so I don't know if he's trying to eat the Power Stone, but that does not seem like a good Christmas snack to me. Then we've got, this was a whole day in the advent calendar. I don't really get this. So this, I think, is clearly a table for the, for like the, the roast turkey, um, which is awesome. Love getting this piece. But like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with the fire. Like, is this just supposed to be like, oh my god, like the place is on fire? Like, I don't really, I don't really get what I'm supposed to do with that. Um, but hey, it's, it's a nice little accessory. Or maybe I'm supposed to attach it to like this gun that came in another day. Like, okay, maybe that's it. Maybe it's supposed to pretend like you're like roasting the turkey. This gun is huge. It's a very elaborate build. It was an entire day to itself. Although, again, the fire is something I just tacked on. Although I think that that looks right. Um, I have no idea what this is supposed to be. Because in my opinion, like, the gun should be held like this, right? Like, this looks like the end of the gun. And this looks like a shoulder rest. But this thing is kind of going the other direction. Like, the handle, at least the way that LEGO shows it being built. So if you were to put it on Rocket this way... Like, it doesn't, it doesn't look right. Like, the angle isn't right. So I guess, I mean, I could just kind of, like, swap the ends, and then maybe that would work. But, I mean, the instructions for advent calendars can be a little bit confusing just because, you know, they are so limited. But, I mean, I guess, I guess that works a little bit better. Like, it's, st it's still, like, way too big, though, and it still can't, like, fit on his shoulder. So I don't really get what Lego was going for there, but it, it, it is a nice build. I just wish it worked like a little bit better with the actual minifigure. Um, then we've got this build, which is one of my favorites. It's a little snowman Thanos, and he even has like his shoulder armor. So I think that that is just really, really nice. And it uses two white minifigure heads. Uh, then we've got a box of stuff that's kind of just Easter eggs for other stuff from like from the Guardians universe. So just an empty box. You've got Yondu's arrow. I wish Kraglin was in this set. He was in the holiday special and we still don't have a minifigure of him. I doubt we'll get one in the Guardians 3 sets. Uh, this is the only thing where I can't tell what it's supposed to be. I don't know if it's just like a part of rockets or something like that. This is one of those Anulax batteries from Guardians of the Galaxy 2 that they steal from the Sovereign. Exact same build as they were in 2017. This is supposed to be the half-opened orb with the power stone in the middle. So that works pretty successfully as well from Guardians 1. And then this is supposed to be the eye that um, that Rocket stole and gave to Thor from Infinity War. And it is a Minions piece from the LEGO Minions sets. So I think that that is kind of hilarious. And then next up, kind of continuing with hardware. This, I think, is the worst day in the calendar. It's basically like a weapons rack like people always make fun of with the Star Wars calendars. You've got a little hammer, a little wrench, and then a stick of dynamite on, like, this robotic arm. It is a little bit nicer than the Star Wars ones, I think, because it does come with, like, these feet. But it's still a boring thing for a day of the advent calendar. But in my opinion, this is the most boring thing in the whole calendar. And that's pretty good, because, like, sometimes Lego puts a lot of duds in advent calendars. Um, and then the last kind of, like, non-holiday related item, besides the food, I guess, is, like, this setup for the awesome mix. That is an amazing printed cassette. That is a really, really nice print. And you do get two of them in this set. And I think that that is just adorable. I really, really like that. And then you also have these standing speakers, which are an extremely basic, like, two-piece build. But it really works, you know? Like, just angle them over. And I think that that looks great. And so I guess the last actual build would be um, this little food table, which is just full of stuff. We've got two mugs. We've got two cupcakes. We've got a bottle of something. And then we have a stack of lemons. And I don't think that's a new print, but I also, if I own it, I only own like one of them because it's kind of new to me. And I think that that is a fantastic print. This is also a pretty nice, uh, like well-built table. And even though you don't have any chairs, like you don't really need them because the figures can kind of just like stand around it and grab a cup to drink from. And then lastly, we have the holiday stuff. So you do have two presents here. This, I'm assuming, is the awesome mix of volume two. And I'm guessing volume one is what's in the tape deck. But the print is exactly the same. It's a little bit weird with all these exposed studs. But I think it's supposed to look like it's half unwrapped. Uh, like, I think that that's what Lego was going for. And then in this wrapped present, you've got a pair of headphones or, like, earmuffs with a one-by-one -one tile. I don't know what the one-by-one -one tile is about. But the headphones are pretty nice, especially, you know, that's a great gift for someone like Peter Quill. So I'll definitely be putting those around his neck. Um, and then you've got this little, like, kind of half-hearted Christmas tree decoration. I, di I didn't really need a whole Christmas tree in this set, but this is a little bit pathetic in my opinion, because it's just like, 
I mean, I guess it's so small so that you can pretend it's growing out of Groot. Okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's what the thing on his back is for. Okay, never mind. That makes more sense. Because I was like, why is this so sad and pathetic? But no. You can put that on his back and then Groot can be your Christmas tree. So that is kind of adorable. I do like that a lot. Um, and I and I like advent calendars like this where like the days kind of go together a little bit. Um, but yeah, that, that works really well. So I love that. I love that so much. Because that is what they did in the holiday special. They did make Groot their Christmas tree as we saw in the end credits scene. Then we've got this singular candy cane, which is a decoration that Mantis uh, had stolen from Kevin Bacon's house in the special. Uh, she ended up leaving it on Earth because she gave it to the cops. But, um, but I mean, it's a nice build. I think it looks fantastic. And then lastly, this thing took up like three days, but I am not complaining. It is a super powered sleigh with a wonderful color scheme. I love the teal, the white, and the red. We've got a sack of gifts in the back. We've got powerful rocket boosters and a steering wheel. You can even detach this. So the three days were like, so you got like the main body in one day, then you got the two wings in a second day, and then you got the kind of like back like attachment in a third day. And I think it was days like 20, 21, or it was, it was 21, 22, and 23. And then Drax was day 24. So I think that that's kind of fantastic. And I really like getting a build this sizable in an advent calendar. And I'm not upset that it took three days to get it. I feel like they could have done like, I feel like they could have made it two days instead of three, but I mean, it's such, it's such a nice build and it works so perfectly that like, I don't, I don't care. It's not like I feel cheated, you know, it's not like I feel like I didn't get enough stuff in this advent calendar. Although we will talk about value closer to the end. So as you can see, you can set up a pretty nice scene on this mat. And this mat is supposed to look like the interior of, I guess, their new headquarters in Nowhere. So I'm actually just going to move all of this stuff off so that you guys can just see the packaging for a second. Um, it's got a nice print, I mean, and then you've got all of the, like, doorways, which I think are a really nice design. If you don't know how advent calendars work, you just open a day and then it has the instructions for that specific day on the inside of the door. And you can, I think, just rip those clean off to make it easier to kind of build. And then the box is interesting because, like, the mat folds down. So this is what the back of the box looks like. And then the front of the box just kind of has the standard advent calendar uh, appearance. And yeah, it shows Groot being the Christmas tree, so I should have I should have realized that. Oh, and there... Oh, okay, maybe I built this wrong. That's why. I built the gun wrong. That's why Rocket couldn't hold it, because I put that piece on the handlebar. So let me fix that. You do have a decent amount of extra pieces in this set, and you could totally build, like, another one or two Christmas gifts out of just the extras if you wanted to. With everything set up together, you can make a really nice little Christmas scene, and I, I just... I really like this calendar. I thought that the holiday special was... A great little break from the rest of the MCU with a lot of, you know, spirit. And and I think that this Lego set really captures that. Or, I mean, yeah, this is a Lego set, even though it's a little bit of a weird one because it's an advent calendar. I like that Lego didn't waste too many slots on mini builds. I like mini builds in advent calendars, and we do have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six here. But they only take up five days of the calendar, so that's like a little bit more than a fifth. And I think that that's okay. And I mean, they're all relevant. Like, I mean, maybe we could have done without, like, the mining pod, but I like it, so I don't care. And I'm glad that LEGO put the two small ones in the same day so that they didn't take up more than, you know, like, one day. Because LEGO has, like, kind of just made lazy advent calendars before, like the very first Harry Potter one. So I like this thing overall. I think that you get... It's great that you get all the Guardians. You are missing Kraglin and Gamora, but Gamora wasn't in the special. And Kraglin, like, I get why Lego didn't make him. I do think there could have been new prints, though. There's four new prints across this entire set. Uh, Nebula's head, torso, and then Drax's head and torso. And I would have liked to have seen an ugly Christmas sweater for Mantis and then a new torso print for Nebula that's just, like, a standard version for her. So that would have been, like, one more new print. I feel like Lego could have done that because this costs $45. And yes, advent calendars don't have the best price per part ratio, but this is not worth $45, even with six minifigures. It's great to get them, don't get me wrong, because so many of these are only available in a $150 set, but it's not worth $45. Like, like look at what you get. You just get a bunch of little, you get a bunch of little junk, to be honest. And it's really nice junk. And I love the junk. I love it so much. But it's not worth $45. Like, imagine what you could buy from Lego for $45, bucks, even in 2022. You can get a lot more value for money elsewhere. 
but this advent calendar has been on sale for 20 to 30 percent off for like a month now that's why i waited so long to get it i always buy my advent calendars like at the end of november because they're usually on sale so you can get it on lego.com right now for like 31 dollars. so that i think is a good price and that i would recommend getting it at but yeah if you're a guardians fan or a christmas fan or just a marvel fan in general i think that you're really gonna like this calendar and I'm very impressed by it after I thought the Avengers one last year was just okay. So let me know what you guys think about this calendar in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And check out my website, goldeninja3000.com. I'll see you guys in more videos soon. Bye for now.